Hi, and welcome to Barry Aftercare. I'm super excited to be with you guys. We are really near in the holidays. And today we're going to be talking about, of course, holidays, holiday eating. Not so much because you've probably heard a lot about that already on social media. Hopefully you've been in support groups and you've been seeing great tips for healthy holiday eating. We'll touch on that a little bit today. But most importantly, today I'm going to talk about questions about how people react to whether you're eating or whether you're not eating at Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner and New Year's and, you know, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and whatever holidays you celebrate. People may be commenting on your weight. If you've lost weight, if you've regained weight, people are rude. We know this, right? So today we're going to talk about tips to help you get through the holidays with your emotion intact, your emotions not leading to emotional eating. So here we go. Let's get started today. And first of all, let me remind you that I am very grateful to and for you for listening to the podcast and being part of a really great community, the bariatric community, and for your supporting not just my podcast, but a lot of podcasts that are available to you out there. So super grateful that you are taking your time and listening today. Let's just jump right in. So we want to prevent emotional eating over the holidays, and we want to preserve your emotional integrity. We don't want you going through the holidays feeling super shameful or getting angry because somebody says something to you that hurts your feelings or they say nothing to you and you want them to say something to you because you've lost weight and they're not noticing or whatever it is. We don't want unhealthy, exaggerated emotions to impede on your having a great holiday season. So here we go. So the first tip that I have for preserving your emotional well-being during the holidays is be prepared. Don't go into these situations that can be emotionally volatile without preparing a little bit ahead of time. And we'll talk about what that means. Let's start in regard to food. And again, like I said, you're being inundated with tips for healthy eating and all of that. So I'm only going to cover this very, very briefly. But remember that your job is to take this process, your journey, your health, seriously. It's it's, it's your journey. It's your health, which makes it your responsibility. I say that a lot. I know. But in this case, it applies as well. So set yourself up for success. Do what you've got to do before you go, even if that means eat a lot of protein before you go to the holiday event so that you make sure that you are getting in that dense, healthy nutrition that your body wants and it won't turn it in to fat. It'll just help nourish you. So maybe you need to eat before you go or plan what you're going to eat when you get to wherever you're going for your holiday meal. And remember, Number one rule of bariatric eating is eat that protein first. You can eat whatever you want that day. Make sure you eat that protein first. And when I say you can eat whatever you want, you may choose that you want to sample every little thing, one or two bites. You may choose that what you want for your personal journey is to select two or three things that you want to eat as opposed to sampling everything. However you decide, remember it is your choice and your decision will hopefully set you up for success. So protein first and stay out of the kitchen or the cooking area, unless of course you're hosting the meal, but let's assume you're going somewhere else. Stay away from where the food is, where all the people gather around the hors d'oeuvres and around the desserts enjoy the company. Encourage other people to come on out here. Let's sit down and have a chat. I haven't seen you for a long time. Take responsibility for making this happen. If everybody's gathered around all the food, you be the one to suggest, hey, come on in here. Let's sit down and have a talk. Or maybe there are kids involved. 
the kids aren't going to be hovered around the food as much as the adults. So say to the kids, you want to sit down and play a game? I know a new card game. I'll teach you this. Or what do you like to play? So involve yourself in things that aren't solely surrounded by the food. All right. Maybe you want to take a healthier version of some foods with you. So let's say you want to have dessert, but you don't want to have completely sugar-filled everything. Maybe take a dessert with you that you can have that's low in sugar or low in carbs or a healthier version that's made with maybe cottage cheese instead of a higher fat cheese. You can take responsibility for your own food intake that day. If you are hosting, perhaps plan a healthier menu for everybody involved. It's not going to hurt anybody, right? And if you have a sugar addiction or a processed carb addiction, then remember, recovery from addiction is an everyday venture. You're not exempt because it's a holiday. And you alone are responsible for your recovery from addiction. And this can be done. I know many post-op patients who completely abstain from sugar because they know if they start, it's going to be a real battle to stop again and they want to avoid regain. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I don't partake of any kind of alcohol, even during the holidays. My recovery is my responsibility. Your health is your responsibility. And if your health, if you have an addiction, that is your responsibility to manage as well. Just like if you have diabetes or any other health conditions, they're your responsibility to manage. And I know that can be very difficult, but the choice is yours. And that is the good news, or maybe the bad news if you don't like taking responsibility. Okay, so the first tip, of course, is be prepared in regard to your food. All right, now the second one, be prepared for comments that may hurt your feelings. Now there's a lot of varieties of this, right? So maybe there's comments about what you're eating, how much you're eating, or you're not eating enough. So let's just play through some of those scenarios. You may or may not have told the people you'll be having your dinner or dinners over the holidays with about your surgery, and that's perfectly fine. However you have chosen to handle the telling about this process is absolutely okay. It's 100% your decision. Don't feel like you have to tell people and don't feel like you have to keep it a secret. Do what's comfortable for you. Regardless, be prepared because if you haven't told people, or even if you have, people are just not sensitive. They don't understand the journey you're going through if they haven't been through it or if they haven't worked in the field. But be prepared for comments about, you know, how little you're eating. Like somebody might say, gosh, so-and-so, you're barely eating anything. Now you have choices. You have options about how to respond. And I'm just going to play around with a few. But you respond in a way that is comfortable for you, as long as it's appropriate and not hurtful to other people, even if you've been hurt. You be the person that exemplifies how to handle things well. We just did a whole series on communication. We're going for assertive, kind communication. That's not going to hurt other people or you. So be that person. All right. So you can respond with the truth if you're comfortable with people knowing. I'm really focusing on my health and today is no exception. Now you can say that even if they don't know you've had weight loss surgery. I'm focusing on my health right now, and today is no exception. It's a beautiful response. So you might try that one out, or you might say, you know what? This is my new way of life, eating smaller portions, eating healthier options. It's my new way of life. You can say, here's a great response, I think. If people say, you're hardly eating anything, say, I know, and I'm really proud of myself for that. Great answer. All of those are truthful, they're honest, and people don't know whether you've had surgery or not with those responses. Now, you can give what I call half-truth responses. (laughs) 
these are some options. So maybe you could say, if somebody says to you, you're not, you're just not eating anything. Look at your plate. Or you may have your small plate. Do you have, you know, your, your choices on there? And people say, what's the deal? You're not eating, you're not eating anything. You can say, you know, my stomach just can't decide if it's happy today or not. So I'm taking it easy. Now, if you're a bariatric patient, you understand that that definitely could be a true statement because some things you eat agree with you, some things you don't. So you don't know, is my stomach going to be happy with these things or not? That's a pretty honest answer. How about this one? I'm trying a new approach to the holidays. I'm going to taste it all and then decide what I want to go back for. Now, after you taste it all, because you can only eat so much, right? You can just say, I'm not ready for seconds. I'm going to save those for leftovers. Truthful statement, right? Or you could use this, and I'm going to say my friends. So when I say my friends here, I'm meeting the people in my support groups. My friends and I are seeing who can get through the holidays without putting on any weight. Again, nice response, pleasant, pretty true, right? You don't want to gain weight over the holidays. So you can say that. Those may be full truths. Those may be half truths for you. I'm not sure, but they're all right. Now, I'm going to tell you the snarky responses. I don't suggest that you use these, but these might be floating around in your head. And if you just can't help yourself, no, just kidding. I do not recommend these. But here's some snarky little responses just for our own fun, right? We're going to be playful here, and I'm going to make myself laugh. Maybe you will too. So somebody says to you, you know what? You're hardly eating anything. Here's the snarky responses. But these are just in your head. You could say to yourself, I'm sure not, but it looks like you're making for what I'm not eating. That would not be a nice thing to say, but you can think it and make you laugh. I'm not eating too much, but it sure looks like you might be making up for everything I'm not eating. That wouldn't be polite. Okay, here's another one. If somebody says, you're hardly eating anything. Oh, how nice of you to notice. Let me inspect your plate. Again, not a nice response, but you can think it in your head and maybe it'll just make you laugh. All right, here's another one. Somebody says, you're just not, you're hardly eating anything. Put on your knife, your fork, sit up straight in your chair and exclaim very loudly and with enthusiasm, play check everyone. Let's all look around and see how much everyone's eating. I hope that makes you chuckle. But again, not, not suggesting that. All right, here's another question that people might ask you if they know you've had surgery. Are you supposed to be eating that? Right? People say that to you. And they've said it to you even before you had surgery. Are you sure you want that? You sure you should be having that much? So it's a, you know, it's a variety of that same question. So this can depend. Now, maybe you've asked that person to be a support person to you. And maybe you've asked them to help you be accountable. So if it's the case that you have partnered up with this person and asked them, you know what, if you see me doing something or eating something that probably isn't good for me, I want you to let me know. Well, then you've asked for their help, and that's a good thing. Chances are it's not going to be that situation at a holiday gathering. Somebody's going to poke their nose in your business and say, are you supposed to be eating that? Or are you sure you need to be having that? So here are some responses. Here's the truth. You know, I'm aware that this, whatever it is, is not something on my everyday food list, but I'm choosing to eat it today. You don't have to make excuses. You don't have to defend or protect. You just say, I'm aware this isn't on my everyday food list, but I'm making the choice to have it today. That basically says back off. It's none of your business, but you did it in a kind way. Here's another response. But if you have an addiction, a food addiction, a sugar addiction, this one doesn't pertain to you. But if you don't, here's a, here's a possibility. There aren't any foods I need to abstain from. So if somebody's like, are you sure you're supposed to be eating that? You just had weight loss surgery. There are no foods I need to abstain from. Again, you're just standing up for yourself. No need to get defensive. No need to get huffy. 
just a very assertive, honest response. Or you can say, that's kind of you to check. I choose not to eat foods like this every day. Every day. Today, I'm choosing to have a few bites. Again, right? Kind, respectful, setting your limits. That's kind of you to check. I choose not to eat foods like this every day, but today I'm choosing to have a few bites. Again, it puts them in your place. You're not getting the huffy. You're not running off crying. You're not stomping off and having a fit and they hurt my feelings. And my, my, my. Just saying what you're saying. You also can set limits and set boundaries with people depending on the relationship you have with them but or or anybody really. You can just say things like, when you comment to me about what I'm eating, I feel frustrated because this is really none of your business. I would appreciate if you would just stay in your own lane, right? Setting boundaries. The when blank, I feel because I would appreciate. When you comment on what I'm choosing to eat, I feel frustrated or I feel angry or I feel embarrassed or I feel whatever. Because these are my decisions and I would appreciate. You know, you, you just minding what you eat. I'll take care of myself. Now, here's some snarky responses. Again, I'm just doing this so we can have a little fun here. Don't go off saying, Dr. Stapleton said to use this. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, so if somebody says to you, Are you sure you should be eating that? Or is this something you're supposed to be eating? You can say, I'm not at all sure I should be eating this. Let me think about it. Hmm. I think I won't should on myself today. And I'll go ahead and have a few bites. Right? You're basically you're basically being funny. I'm not gonna should on myself. Not today. I'm not at all sure I should be eating this, but I'm gonna a little snarky, but give yourself a little chuckle. Okay, another snarky response. Are you sure you should be eating this? I'm sure I want to eat this today. How about you? Are you going to have some? It's really great. Want to join me? Here, are two forks. So just kind of go at it that way. It's like, nah, I'm sure I want to. Want to join? Here's another snarky response. Are you sure you should be eating that? And you say, are you sure you should be asking me questions like that? Again, don't say those things, but give yourself a laugh inside. Now, there are other comments people may say to you that might hurt your feelings, might tick you off, might trigger some stuff from the past, might make you feel similarly in an unpleasant way to how you felt in the past. We don't want to react to that. I understand that those are hot buttons for most people and they they can really lead to instantaneous heightened emotions, but do your best to keep your cool and remember People's comments are not about you. People's comments are about them. If somebody says something rude to you, that's about their being rude or insensitive, or perhaps they are ignorant or untrained in how to go about that. So it's not even necessarily that they're trying to be malicious toward you, even though it may feel that way. Do, do not take these things so personally, right? Just respond with your truth. So people might say, oh my gosh, you've lost so much weight. And again, you can say, I have lost weight. I've been intending to. Or I'm aware of my weight. Thanks for noticing. Excuse me, I feel a sneeze coming on. Hmm. So if, you know, if they make comments about, <coughs> pardon me, about you look like you've lost too much weight, don't bristle. Just say, I'm aware of my weight. Thanks for noticing. And walk away. Or just say, you know, I've got this, you know, I'm working on my weight with my doctor. You don't have to elaborate. You don't have to get your undies in a wad about it. You know, just own it and say, I got this covered. Okay. <laughs> if somebody says, Wow, you just had surgery. You don't look like you've lost any weight. Now, of course, that's going to hurt. Of course, that's going to prickle you. You know, it's going to, you're going to feel angry. 
You don't have to react, though. You can respond in a kind way. You don't look like you've lost any weight. I've only just begun the journey. It can take some time. You don't look like you've lost any weight. I'm working with my doctor on my weight. You know, don't let them get your goat. Just have answers prepared. And that's why I say, be prepared. Practice these answers. You know the people you're going to be with, and you know if there are people who are going to say these kinds of things to you. So have a response ready, rather than be like the deer in the headlights, like, oh my God, where'd that come from? Have a response prepared that is appropriate and assertive. Or if somebody says, you sure have regained a lot of weight, say, I sure have, and I'm working on that right? Or I sure have. And I feel angry that you've made that comment to me on a celebration day. And I would prefer if you would keep your comments about my weight to yourself. So you're setting boundaries without exploding all over them with your anger or your hurt. It's okay to be angry or hurt, but take your anger or hurt to the bathroom and have a chat with yourself in the mirror rather than exploding on somebody else. You know, just have it, or take somebody you really love and trust outside and go, we just sit outside with me for a minute and then say, you know what, that just really hurt my feelings or that really made me so angry, but I don't want to react, but I need to talk it out. Now, one of these next things is, these next tips is really going to play in. So I'm just going to go to that one right now, right? So if somebody pushes your buttons with a hurtful or insensitive or just downright rude comment, then have your lifelines ready. What that means is you've prepared for this and you've got some ways to calm yourself. So you might have a list of things on your phone and you know when you start feeling that feeling of hurt or rejection or anger or disgust or whatever it is you're feeling and you don't want to react inappropriately to it, Go to the bathroom and pull out your phone and read your list. And it might just say, take five deep breaths. Don't take people's comments personally. Have enough respect for yourself to respond respectfully. I am responsible for my choices. I am in charge of my responses. Just some affirmations that remind you they may be rude, but you have the choice to be or not to be. You can choose to be rude and affected, or you can choose to remain calm, work through your emotions on your own, or have your friends on standby. I'm going to the family dinner at four o'clock, and I don't know what to expect from some of these people, but they push my buttons. So are you going to be around? Could I call you if I find myself getting into an emotional jam? I don't want to react, but I might have intense feelings. Could I step outside and call you and you can help me calm down? So have some friends who you know are going to be available. Or if they're not, just say, could I call your phone and just vent to you on voicemail? Somebody who is safe for you to get all your emotions out on that you're not angry with. Then you can take a few deep breaths and go back and avoid the rude person. But it's really important that you make a list of healthy options on your phone. If you're tempted to overeat, go in the bathroom and say, holidays are no exception. My health is my responsibility every day. I will make choices that I feel proud of. Whatever you need to say to yourself, have these things listed. I just read an interesting book, and I won't get into that, but the woman had a list of things that <laughs> reminded her of the good reasons she left the person she was in an unhealthy relationship with. Because when she was around that person at times, she felt like she was going to cave into her emotions because she still was very attracted to this person. She still had a lot of love in a lot of different areas for this person, but there were very legitimate reasons that she had chosen to get out of the relationship. So she had written on a piece of paper the reasons she got out of that relationship. 
this is what you're doing for yourself here. You're writing down healthy ways to work through your emotions. You might even take a piece of paper and a pen with you and have it in your, your wallet or, you know, your purse or whatever is that you can write down your emotions. Do something to get away, to recollect yourself so that you can go back and not make a bigger deal out of a situation or create a scene where there's, you know, it's a holiday. Try to avoid those kinds of things, right? Take a time out for yourself. Take a time out outside. Go sit in your car. Go sit, you know, behind the house. Go for a short walk. Do what you've got to do till you can Balance the emotion with logic. Remember, when our emotions get too big, we need to bring some logic into the situation. Those person's comments were about those persons. Uh, That comment hurt, yet I can choose not to react inappropriately. Do what you've got to do to remain as calm as you possibly can. So have your lifelines ready meaning notes on your phone, people you can talk to, a journal you can write in, whatever you've got to do. Also, give yourself permission to leave somewhere. If somebody just keeps tripping you up, angering you, peppering you with insults, whatever it is, give yourself permission to leave. Now, maybe you didn't drive yourself to that place. So if you can't physically leave a place, then feign a headache. You guys, I've got to go lay down. My head is just really, I I just need 30 minutes of time in a quiet, dark space. Is there somewhere I could lie down? Do what you've got to do to get yourself out of toxic situations. Be kind to yourself, all right? Be kind to yourself throughout the day. It's okay for you to have intense feelings. It's not okay for you to lash out. It's okay for your feelings to be hurt. It's not okay for you to lash out. It's okay for you to feel judged or criticized. It's not okay for you to lash out. So do what you've got to do to be an appropriate, assertive, respectful person. You'll feel a lot better about yourself at the end of the day. All right, another tip is know your triggers. There are a lot of triggers that can spike our emotions. It can be environmental, it can be emotional, it can be physical. So an environmental trigger might be the place where you're going. Maybe you're going to a place as that as a child was a magical place for you. And so this triggers happy feelings for you. It triggers peace, it, it triggers love, it triggers a lot of good emotion. But maybe you're going to a place that when you were a child was a scary place or an unsafe place. And so being in that place triggers fear or triggers insecurity or triggers sadness or anger. So if you're going to a place like that, imagine yourself surrounding yourself with love and peace and comfort before you go. Or take a relic with you. It could be a a relic, I call them recovery relics. Whether or not you have an addiction, you're recovering from obesity. Have something in your pocket or in your purse that reminds you of all the progress that you're making, not just with your physical health, but with your emotional health. Or take a little piece of cotton that's soft that you can rub. You know how kids have their blankies and their stuffed animals? Take something that you can find comfort in that's just in your pocket, something that feels good to you, or just as a reminder, I can stay calm. I am safe. I am an adult. I am never going to have to go back to that place in my youth again. I can be here as an adult and know I'm safe. Do what you've got to do because environments can be very, very triggering. And if you need to say no, you're not going there, then say no. It's okay. All right. Emotional. Emotional triggers can be a person. It can be a place just like the environment. But maybe there's a person who always tormented you about your weight as a child. Or maybe there's a person who hurt you in some way. These people are emotional triggers and they may lead you to want to emotionally eat in response. Any trigger that's a negative trigger for you may lead you to want to emotionally eat 
We want to prevent emotional eating. That's why we plan our responses. We plan how to get ourselves out of a sticky situation. We write things on our phone to remind ourselves of the progress we made and we want to keep making. We give ourselves tools as reminders because if you get really highly emotional, sometimes you can't think of the right thing to do. So make sure that you know if you're heading into a trigger situation for you, that's not going to be positive. And make sure you've got your healthy choices outlined, the ways to protect yourself and follow through with that. Finally, there can be physical triggers, which is the smell of food, right? It can be the smell of food. It can be the sound of someone's voice. It can be the smell of someone's perfume. There are so many things. Remember, in our brains, we've got these file cabinets. And these file cabinets are filled with memories and trigger, you know, emotions and things that have happened in the past. And they open and shut and open and shut and open and shut all the time without our permission. And so you may go somewhere and all of a sudden you have this memory that's really painful and a file cabinet has opened without your permission. Instead of turning to food to find comfort, use that list on your phone of healthy ways to respond. So set yourself up for success during these holiday visits with the people, with the places, with the food. You can do this. You can come out of there going, okay, it wasn't perfect, but I did better than I expected to, or I've done better than I've done in the past, or you know what? I learned a lot about myself today, and even though I blew it with food, I learned what things are triggers for me, and I can plan better for next time. Be kind to yourself. This is not this is not a time to beat up on yourself. There's never a time to really beat up on yourself. Be open to learning and growing and figuring out how to handle these situations better each and every time. So it's a process, right? So just going to do a quick rundown of tips to protect your emotions over the holidays. Be prepared. Be prepared food-wise. We've talked about that. You've been reading about it. Read some more. Listen to more podcasts. Be prepared for comments. Anticipate what they're going to be and practice your your response. Healthy, assertive, appropriate responses because that's who you are. Healthy, assertive, and appropriate. You set boundaries for yourself. All right. So have responses prepared ahead of time. Know your triggers. And if you know a place or a person or a situation or a food or whatever it is is going to trigger you, have your ways to cope with that without turning to food prepared ahead of time. Have your lifelines ready, the notes on your phone, the people that are supportive in your life. Be your own friend, right? Give yourself permission to leave or to remove yourself for a time and be kind to yourself. So hopefully those tips will help you emotionally as you make your way through a holiday. It may be your first holiday as a post app. It may be your 50th. Hmm. I don't know anybody who's had weight loss surgery 50 years ago, but maybe it's your fifth or your 10th. It doesn't matter. Take care of yourself. Do your best. Be gracious with others. Be kind with others and be gracious and kind with yourself. And again, I thank you for joining me. And I really, really extend my gratitude to you and my wishes for the best of holidays for you. You have a lot of input into making these really great holidays. And as always, this is your health. This is your journey. This day, every holiday, and every day of the year. Take, take care, my friends, and we will be together again soon.